Critica Online is a brand new instanced arcade brawler MMO being published in the West by Enmass Entertainment, the same guys that published Terra for North America. The game features action combat, the choice between four different class archetypes, each of which has two to three additional subclasses, and an anime art style. In this video I play the NA slash EU closed beta version of the game that will release later in the year as a free to play title. So this is Critica Online, a brand new MMORPG brawler being published by Enmass Entertainment. Got a beta key sent through for this game about a week ago, and a lot of people requested to check it out, because there's not really many new MMOs coming out at the moment. But we've got this, so let's check it out and see if it's a game worth playing. So right off the bat, we've got four classes to choose from. We've got the Warrior, the Rogue, the Gun Mage, and... The boob class. Nice, no, the Reaper. And each of these classes seem to have different subclasses. Like the Reaper has Vamp or Valkyrie. The Gun Mage has Frost Mage, Shadow Mage, Warp Mage. The Rogue has uh, Cat Spore, Assassin or Wolf Guardian. Interesting. And the Warrior has. Uh, Fire Lord, Doom Blade, and Berserker. I think I'm going to play the Reaper, not for the massive boobs, but the fact that she uses a scythe as a weapon. I love scythe using classes, so let's use this one. So this is the character customization. There's a few little hairstyles to choose from. You can change the color of the hair. I think I want to go with blue hair for some reason today. A few different face structures. Change the eye color. We can actually change the color of her outfit. I appreciate that. Let's go with a blue and black outfit. Fucking sexy, dude. There we go. Looking good. So the character creation's not too crazy, but at least it gives you a few options. At least you can change the colors and things. Boobs or GTFO. Can we have that name? We can! Nice! Alright, so we've got a bit of a cinematic here. All English voice acting. Right, so we've just entered the game. Move around with W, A, S, and D. Jump around with space, and I guess you dodge with shift. Yes, and it seems like there's a two second cooldown on that. Have to say, the movement and everything right off the bat feels very responsive. Frame rate is as smooth as you'd expect from a game with these styles of graphics. Uh, you've got left click to do your basic attack. Oh my god, there's a big fucking giant titan walking around in the background. So, the game wants me to test out some combos, so 4-4 four, four is apparently a combo. And you've also got two, one, three, four. Nice. Right, so we've gone through the two little stages and now we've got a boss battle, have we? This guy seems pissed off, doesn't he? I don't blame him, he's been chained up. He's killed all of his friends. Nice one, Frank. Let's just get in and do big damage. We're gonna have to dodge out of this by the looks of it. It certainly does feel like an arcade brawler. Which is uh, great, because that's what the game's advertised as. And there it is, stage clear. Very arcade feel to the game. You kill the boss, you loot the monsters, you get some different gear. SS, so you're given a rank based on performance as well. And like many Asian games, you pick a random card at the end. Boobs or get the fuck out is the new champion that this world needs. So far, I think I'd describe this game as being in the same genre as Dragon Nest, Vindictus, Continent of the Ninth Seal, those kind of instanced games where you go through various stages. Incredibly fast-paced combat. I have to admit, there's no real thought process going through my head. I'm honestly just button bashing. But I guess there's some method to the madness as you get further into the game with more difficult enemies. These kind of games tend to have very copy and paste levels. Copy and paste bosses. Um, this is a different boss to the first one we fought already. I've heard of twins in the past. But twins times four? Twins times five? You what game? There's some kind of random rail gun appearing out of nowhere. I guess it's going to shoot the titan before it goes into the portal. Yeah, easy kills. Right, I've gained access to some kind of hub area by the looks of it. So I'm going to assume the first two or three instances were purely tutorial. So if I equip this scythe, does it change the appearance? It actually does. I wasn't expecting that. So if I wear these shoes, do they look different? No, the shoes don't. What about the hat? No, you can't see the hat. So it seems like you can only see weapons. They're the only things that visually change your character's appearance. This guy's playing as a fucking high school kid. He looks like some kind of warp mage. That would be my guess. If you look up here, it shows that I've got three quests in this area. 
So let's go. I think I can only do it on easy mode. Okay. Oh no! Our friend just got bloody killed. He just got executed in front of us. We've freed the pigs. They've got metal helmets on for some reason, the poor bastards. I wonder if this guy's a little bit more of a challenge. He hasn't got too much health. Seems like the starting mobs... Oh, okay, I actually took 1% damage this time. A salvage machine. So let's put everything in the salvage machine and see if we can break down this gear and get something out of it. This is Vault Manager Vangeline. She's got a nice pair of weapons, hasn't she? I'll store my goods in Vangeline's warehouse. At this quest hub, it seems like I've got four different options. Easy, normal, hard, or insane. Let's definitely try out insane mode difficulty. One would assume that the harder the difficulty, the better the rewards and loot will be. Insane mode certainly feels like a lot more of a challenge. I took one hit and it took me down to 75% health. And it's really chain CC these guys, just fucking... Bash all the buttons. Every button in the world needs to be bashed. Right, let's kill the little mini boss. Bad dog. Oh my god, I'm almost dead. F1. Heal. Insane mode actually seems like a half decent amount of fun. It's not too much of a face roll. The mobs are still really easy, but getting attacked once or twice is going to take like one third of your health down. Right, so this is our first boss on insane mode. I have a feeling it's going to be quite challenging. But we'll see. It doesn't seem like I can stun lock this guy as much. I need to actually keep an eye on his abilities and use my shift ability to dodge. Definitely involves a bit more thought process than the other bosses. I'm really glad you can just access insane mode quite quickly into the game. And there it is. There's the KO. These mobs are a lot more tanky, but I can still stagger them. I feel like it's only going to be the boss that might be a bit of a challenge. I almost got bloody one hit by this guy. I need to do some very big damage. Combo these guys. Just keep chain comboing them. And hopefully not get hit again. If not, I'm fucked. Right, here he is. This is the boss. He's got 28 health bars. Oh no! Oh no. That hurt. This hurt. Oh my god, I'm fucked. F2. Heal. Oh, nice. We're actually taking big damage on him now. Now he's comboed. Now he's on the floor. He's losing all of his health. This is what we need. Let's dodge out of that. That would have really hurt me. Let's use a health kit. If you do the bosses on insane mode, it goes from a button bashing thing to something you actually have to think about. Big damage. Combos. Is this it? Can we finish him? Please. Die, dude. I think we got him. I think we got him. There it is. Oh my god, that one was actually really hard. Because I did it under-leveled by quite a bit. Basically, everything in this cash shop seems to be pretty much cosmetic. But there is a section that says pets. And from what I can tell, the pets actually give you buffs and deal damage to enemies. So I guess some people would consider that a little bit pay to win. But it's not too bad, really. Something that is starting to happen quite a lot now is I am getting sent back to stages that I've already completed multiple times for quests. I've had to do this one about four times now. And uh, it does get a little bit boring when you have to do the same mission over and over again. And that's level nine. Fantastic. Oh my god, another quest for the same fucking mission. Please. We had a lot of diversity in the levels when the game first started, but now... We're just doing the same fucking level over and over and over and over again. And it's giving me AIDS. Please let this be the last time I need to kill this fucking boss. She's put her staff in between her boobs in this loading screen. Nice. Blazing through the levels in this game. Shaking the screen to make it even more intense. Right. A bat monkey assassin. Right. How does one become a bat monkey? That's what I want to know. Special kind of fucking crossbreeding right there. All right, so this is the final boss of this level, Bone Tail. I'm gonna want to dodge as much as we. Oh my god! Big health, so it needs big damage to take it down. Give me something good, game. Give me a blue or an epic. I got a blue. Now I've got some gear that's eligible to be enchanted. Let's see how this system works. Enhance. It costs 500. Is it RNG? Succeed. I'm going to assume it's somewhat RNG, or maybe it's guaranteed to a certain point. More white stones. Failed. Right. It costs quite a lot to enhance your gear in this game. Success. Great. And again. Go on. Nice. 
Give me that RNG, boys. One more attempt. F. Similar to Black Desert, it seems like you get kind of fail stacks. You get Enhancer's Blessing. Since getting my new weapons and upgrading them, I can feel a huge power difference. I'm absolutely demolishing these monsters now. It's actually doubled my power in combat, I think. It seems like as you get further into the game, the stages last for longer as well. Wow, the difference that gear makes in this game. I've almost one-comboed the fucking boss. It took me ages to kill it last time. I think I have one comboed it. Wow. I have to say, since I've started getting gear that can be upgraded, and I obviously need money and supplies to do that upgrading, the game has become a lot more enjoyable, and I'm now more okay with running the same level over and over, because I'm still getting money and I'm making progress when it comes to my gear. Whereas previously, where I had to run the same level, that wasn't the case, because I hadn't unlocked enhancing yet. You really level up very, very quickly past level 10. Like, the game kind of starts off relatively slow, and then it seems to speed up a little bit. This is the Alliance Training Grounds. I guess we just practice. You can do an infinite fucking combo on the training dummies. Hello, little dogs. Not much you can do, is there? Not when you're chain comboed. Fucking horse! Finally, we are now level 15, and we can do this class change thing. We can be a vamp or a Valkyrie. Already decided. Valkyrie. How can you say no to a picture like that? Valkyrie awakened skills. So at level 50, you can awaken your skills. Nice. It reminds me of Black Desert a little bit though. Let's see how effective my Valkyrie abilities are. Oh my god, they seem a lot more effective and a lot more fun. Let's go. Fucking big damage. The class and the combat has just gotten so much better and more fun. It's ridiculous now. My person is a superhero, it feels like. Chaotic, fast-paced, arcade-like combat. That's uh, pretty much Critica Online in a nutshell for you. What a weird posture my character's doing. Yeah. That was Critica Online. So after playing Critica Online for a few hours, my opinion on the game so far isn't overly amazing. Something that I did find somewhat fun for a little bit of time was the combat, but even then it's not really that amazing. Everything else in the game just seems to be okay, and okay is as far as I'd go with any other aspect of the game, from the level design, to the boss fights, to the upgrade system, and even the cash shop. I think it's the kind of game you're going to play for 20 minutes to an hour, until you get to the point Point where you start having to do really repetitive missions doing the same levels over and over again and then you'll probably get bored and just put the game down and never to play it again that being said though if you're a big fan of anime and enjoyed games such as vindictus dragon nest and continent of the ninth seal then critica online could actually be a game for you as it kind of feels the same instanced mmorpg genre that those games also fill it's not a genre that i'm personally interested in but i know people do enjoy these kind of games for the fast-paced combat and boss fights. But overall, Critica Online, not a bad game, not a great game, just a bit of a meh kind of game, which most of you won't really be interested in. And if you are interested in it, then it's free to play, so you've got nothing to lose in trying it out. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope some of you found it helpful. Please let me know your thoughts on Critica Online in the comments below. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Was this a game you'd recommend? My next few first impressions will probably consist of Worlds Adrift, Life is Feudal's MMO version, Legends of Aria, and another new MMO which I've forgotten the name of. I spend most of my time live streaming on Twitch nowadays, so there's no real ETA as as to when these next vids will be released so follow me on twitch if you want to talk about mmos but thanks for watching if you made it this far i hope you all have a really great day and i'll see you again really soon